Hello, fifth graders. This is chapter three, lesson four of the Ecosystem Restoration Unit. There are three activities in this lesson and we will be doing all of them. So let's get started. Remember as ecologists, we are trying to figure out why the Cercopia trees in the project area aren't growing and thriving. We started out by investigating soil. What did we conclude about how soil can be different in different areas? To answer this question, write the answer in your chapter three, lesson four activity packet in a notebook. Talk about the answer with someone near you or think about the answer in your head. Pause the video and answer this question. To help figure out what's going on with the soil in the project area, a scientist at Natural Resources Rescue has been studying soil and plants in a laboratory and has sent us new data. Remember, we are looking at our Costa Rican rainforest. We have a project area and a healthy rainforest. She planted two of the same kind of plants, one in nutrient rich soil and one in nutrient poor soil. She measured them at the beginning and at the end of six months. So let's look at the data. So we've got our plant and nutrient rich soil. This is the beginning and this is after six months. So I see a significant amount of growth. And then this is a plant and nutrient poor soil at the beginning and after six months. There's some growth, but I don't see a whole lot. Let's look at the data a little bit closer. So this is for the plant growth in the nutrient rich soil. Our table has April 1st and then six months later on October 1st, which is the date of our observations. We have the weight of the plant and the height of the plant. So at the beginning, April 1st, the weight of the plant was 0.5 kilograms or one pound, and the height was 15 centimeters or about six inches. On October 1st, six months later, the plant had a weight of 1.5 kilograms or about three pounds and a height of 30 centimeters or 12 inches. This is the plant that grew in nutrient rich soil with a lot of decomposers. How did the plant's weight and height change? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter three, lesson four activity packet in a notebook you can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about the answer in your head. Pause the video and answer this question now. Now let's look at the plant growth in nutrient poor soil a little bit closer. So again, we have our date of observation, which is April 1st or October 1st, and our weight and height of our plant. This plant grew in nutrient poor soil without many decomposers. So at the beginning, on April 1st, our plant had a weight of 0.5 kilograms or one pound and a height of 15 centimeters or six inches. On October 1st, six months later, the plant had a weight of 0.7 kilograms or about 1.6 pounds and a height of 20 centimeters or about eight inches. What changes do you notice? What does this mean about the plant's body matter? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter three, lesson four activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you or you can think about the answer in your head. Go ahead and pause the video to answer this question. Take a moment to think about how the plants are different. How are the plants different? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter three, lesson four activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about the answer in your head. Pause the video to answer this question now. Now let's look at these images. These are real photos of plants that were grown without enough nutrients. So probably in nutrient poor soil. So in this top picture, I notice that there's some yellowing, the leaves are spotted. Um, even these leaves at the top here have yellow spots on them, not quite as big, but they're starting. And I notice in this bottom picture that the red tomatoes or the orange tomatoes have some huge black and brown holes in them. So now that we've looked at these pictures, answer this question. 
What happens to plants without enough nutrients? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your Chapter 3, Lesson 4 activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about the answer in your head. Hello, fifth graders. This is Chapter 3, Lesson 4 of the Ecosystem Restoration Unit. Let's go ahead and continue our learning. So today we are going to investigate this question. How do nutrients in the soil help plants grow? We can use this sim to help us figure out what nutrients do for plants. As ecologists, you will need to observe the plants in the sim very closely. We're going to change the ecosystem so nutrients disappear from the soil and observe the plants. To open the simulation, you can log on to Amplify, click on the Ecosystem Restoration Unit, and then click on the orange box with a 1, or you can keep watching this video. I'm going to go ahead and open the simulation now. So remember, when we observe the simulation, we want to keep our focus on the plants. I'm going to go ahead and press play and speed up. So as we observe our simulation, let's focus on the nutrients, which are our purple triangles, and our plants, which is right here. So I am seeing a lot of water and nutrients go into the plant through the roots, and that's giving it some more energy to give food matter to the rabbits and to the mushrooms. Let's observe for a couple more moments. So again, I see the nutrients and the water going into the plant through the roots, which is giving the plant energy, and it's also allowing the plants to give food energy and matter to both rabbits as well as decomposers. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the presentation. So, if we were to remove the decomposers in the simulation, the plants become really unhealthy and start to wither. So answer this question. What do you think the connection is between the decomposer and plant parts of an ecosystem? Why do the decomposers seem to affect the plants? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter three, lesson four activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about the answer in your head. Pause the video and answer this question now. I also want you to think about this question. What do nutrients do for plants? To answer this question, again, you can write the answer in your chapter three, lesson four activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you, or you can think about the answer in your head. Go ahead and pause the video to answer this question. Our next question is how do nutrients affect an ecosystem? You can answer this question the same way you've been answering the other questions earlier in this lesson. Go ahead and pause the video to answer question eight now. So we learned about the role nutrients play in creating bigger and taller plants. Remember our plant and nutrient rich soil at the beginning and after six months compared to the plant and nutrient poor soil at the beginning and after six months. And answer this question, why do we care that the plants are bigger and taller? To answer this question, you can write the answer in your chapter three, lesson four activity packet in a notebook. You can talk about the answer with someone near you or you can think about your answer in your head. Pause the video to answer this question now. One really important vocabulary word that we've been using a lot this chapter is nutrient. That means something taken in by plants and animals that helps them grow. Let's keep this in mind as we move forward with the rest of our lessons and finishing out chapter three. That is the end of lesson four. I'll see you in lesson five.